ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستغفره ونستعينه ونستهديه ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فهو المهتد ومن يضلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا ونشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله وصفيه من خلقه وخليله اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا وحبيبنا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه ومن والاه عباد الله اوصيكم ونفس المقصرة اولا بتقوى الله فاتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتوا الا وانتم مسلمون ثم اما بعد all praise are due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the most gracious and the most merciful the best of his peace and blessings shall be bestowed upon his beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and upon those that follow his footsteps. Dear brothers and sisters in Islam, we all feel the heat of the elections. A very important event that Canada is experiencing right now an event that every single citizen or resident of Canada should be aware of, aware of the implications, aware of the consequences, aware of the people involved in such event. Because it's about time for us to realize that I don't want to exaggerate, but a lot of things in your life will be affected by the outcome of such event. Why? Because simply this event is a chance for people to choose their leadership. And when we say leadership, it's definitely a term that needs to be explained because I truly believe that, that not all of us realize the meaning of leadership not only us as voters or citizens but I'm pretty sure that not many candidates realize the meaning of leadership and it's evident when we see people all of a sudden become fearful when election comes, when citizens feel threatened because certain people are seeking leadership. This tells us very well that leadership is misunderstood by some candidates or they're seeking things other than leadership, whether it's personal gain, fame, interest in this race. We always go back to the guidance of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, our beloved prophet, to try to understand what is leadership? What does it mean to be in that position? And what is your main responsibility towards people? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when he first received the revelation in a very famous story in his final days just before he received his revelation he used to go to Ghar Hira he used to go to Ghar Hira to meditate <coughs> contemplate think of his spiritual being people's problems on that mountain he received the revelation and it was a very huge responsibility for him that it scared him it's not a joke to be a prophet we all know historically prophets Jesus alayhi salam Moses alayhi salam Ibrahim alayhi salam people that changed history they were leaders <clears throat> they were leaders that made a difference 
that we still talk about them right now. They still have followers thousands of years after their death. I mean, can you imagine the success of being a leader that you still have followers thousands of years after your death? These are people that left real prints and impact on people's hearts and people's lives. So they must have something that we can learn from. Muhammad Sallallahu felt a huge responsibility to be given that leadership. He went home to his wife. He was nervous. It's a huge sense of responsibility. Lesson number one, when you are about to embark on or take a role of leadership, if you're not nervous about it, there's a problem with you because if you're not worried about the huge responsibility you have towards people, that means people are not on your mind. That means you're seeking something else. So Muhammad Sallallahu went to his wife. He was worried. Am I going to do a good job? What was his wife's Khadija radiallahu anha wa ardaha? What was her reply to him? Listen and listen well. In a famous hadith, she said, Rudwanullah alayha to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Wallahi ma yuhzik Allah, abada, O oh by Allah, you will never be let down. Meaning, O oh by Allah, you will be able to do your job successfully. Why? Why, O oh Khadija? What did you see in Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that made you believe that he will do his job successfully as a leader? Innaka la tasilur rahim. You're good to your family. Number one observation. Number one evidence. You're good to your family. You're good to people. You help people when they need help. You honor the guest when they visit you. You help the poor and the needy and the weak. You help people that are suffering, that are struggling. That's all what she focused on, saying you will be a successful leader because you take care of everybody. You take care of your family. You take care of your neighbors. You take care of the weak, you take care of the poor, you take care of the hungry. And the story ends there. And we have Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, a leader who has right now, almost 1400 years after his death, over 1.7 billion followers. Why? Because he cared for people. And the testimony given by his wife. And we know it's not easy to get a testimony from your wife. Caring for people. His style was all about care. And this is why Rasulullah called it, called that leadership Ra'i. In his teachings, he said, "Kullukum ra'in wa kullukum mas'ulun an ra'iyatih," and he focused on an imam ra'in wa mas'ulun an ra'iyatih. He said, "All of you are ra'i." Now, ra'i could be translated as a shepherd, or ra'i as a caregiver. Caregiver. And then he said, "Wal imam mas'ulun an ra'iyatih." And the imam, the leader in his community, whether it's in our case the MP that we're choosing, is a leader. Why? What makes him a leader or makes her a leader? Because she's going to be taking care of you. Or he's going to be taking care of you. This is leadership. And the latest studies on leadership. We can all go and read and search. 
puts care in the heart of the, heart of the skills. You might be organized, charismatic, knowledgeable, healthy, experienced, degrees. But if you don't care, you mean nothing. You mean nothing to people and we see it nowadays. And some member of parliament are trying to seek re-elections. You talk to people say, we don't know them. We don't see them. They don't care about us. If care is not in the heart of your leadership skills, every other qualification means nothing. The school of Muhammad وسلم, and the teachings of Muhammad وسلم, are telling us, you want to be a leader? You need to be a care giver. You need to take care of your people like he exactly took care of his people. He also said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, إِذَا صَلُحَ الرَّاعِي صَلُحَةِ If the leader who only he calls him or her as a ra'i, not qa'id, not leader, not president, not chief, ra'i, caregiver. If the caregiver is good to his people, people's condition will get better. And we see this happening across the globe. When people have leaders that are destroying their own countries, this is not news to us. We need leaders that take care of people, and this is how our country will stay strong and will develop. Rasulullah also told us in a very important hadith Mamin Imam in Yuhli Kubaba who do not will Haja Tawal Hilla, well Meskana, Illa Agla Kalaha, Illa Agla Kalahu Abuaba Sama Iduna, Hilatahu, Hajatahu, Wamaskanata. If a leader, again, Imam means a leader. If a leader closes his doors, and these are the words that are used in the hadith, <coughs> if a leader closes his doors against his whom, he mentioned three types of people, sahab al haja a person who has a need, awil al-khalla, a person who is poor, awil maskana, a person who's weak, the needy, the poor, and the weak. Which, by the way, each and every one of us, <coughs> if we need something, we're needy and poor and weak. So don't think in your mind that if I have a good job and I have money, this doesn't apply to me. Kul sahib haja life. Any person who is in need of something is needy and poor because you don't have it, and weak because you're trying to get it but you're not able to. So it applies to all humans in a state of weakness. We all go through that state of weakness at one point in our life when we want something or need something. So if the leader closes his door or her door against the people that need him or her, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will close the door of heavens in his face. They will not be given the provident, the support from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the creator, because they did not do their jobs. As leaders, they are meant to help others and take care of people. More, Rasulullah said, also in the famous hadith, Allahumma man walla man wulliya min amri ummati shay'an fashakka alayhim fashkuk alayhim. وَمَنْ وُلِّيَ مِنْ أَمْرِ أُمَّتِي شَيْئًا فَرَفَقَ بِهِمْ فَرْفِقْ بِهِمْ Oh Allah, whoever was given the opportunity and the chance to lead people, to manage their affairs, and he made things difficult on people, Oh Allah, make his life or her life difficult. And whoever was given a chance to manage people's affairs, and he made life easy for people, oh Allah, make life easy for him or her. This is leadership, my dear brothers and sisters, as we learn it from one of the best leaders, from the best leaders in history, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, 
It's not just our testimony. It's all in the book of history. We learn from him. Can please ask you to get up and make room for your brothers. The masjid is getting full. Please get up and make room. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah. The school of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the best school to learn, to learn from, especially when it comes to leadership and taking care of people and managing people's affairs, building a coherent, cohesive, homogeneous, healthy society is what we're looking for. What do we want from leaders? We don't want leaders that will plant fear in people's hearts. We don't want leaders that will make people feel threatened, unsafe. To be honest with you, it really doesn't matter what color or what party or who's serving. If all leaders manage to have those qualities and skills, people will be happy and safe. People will develop. Because what people want, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described in Surah Quraysh, فَلْيَعْبُدُوا رَبَّ هَذَا الْبَيْتِ الَّذِي أَطْعَمَهُمْ مِنْ جُوعٍ وَآمَنَهُمْ مِنْ خَوْفٍ What do people, normal people want so they can develop and flourish and be successful in life? They want أَطْعَمَهُمْ مِنْ جُوعٍ وَآمَنَهُمْ مِنْ خَوْفٍ They want good economy, good jobs, job security, and they want safety, amanahum min khawf. They want to be safe. They want to feel safe in their homes, in their communities, in their places of worship. They don't want to feel that someone is just trying to get rid of them, or vilify them, or dehumanize them. This is not what people are looking for. You don't want to keep people in a state of fear. We want to build Canada together. We want good economy, we want safety. This is how Canada will become the strongest and remain the safest place on earth. But if people come and play with this equation and sell themselves based on fear, division, this is gonna definitely affect our social structure and our integrity as a community and as a society. One of the best students of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anhu wa ardah. Again, one of the best leaders ever lived. Best student of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. What does he have to offer when it comes to leadership? In a very famous saying, when Umar became the leader, he said, Wallahi law atharat dabbatun ala shati'i dijla fi al-Iraq. Allahum mansur ahl al-Iraq. Khaffif anhum hawin anhum ya Rabbil Alameen. La khashitu an yas'alani an yas'alani Allahu anha yawm al-Qiyama. Allahu Akbar. He's saying, if a dabba, if a sheep, not a human being, if a sheep trips, in Iraq, and Iraq is hundreds of kilometers away from Medina, where Umar used to be. So at the end of his state, so if a sheep trips, I will be afraid that I will be questioned about it on the Day of Judgment. Look, about, look at the care, not just for humans, for animals, for the environment. For the ecosystem, as a leader, your job is to care about all. This is leadership, my dear brothers and sisters. Another testimony from a wife towards her husband, Atika bint Zayd, the wife of Umar, when she was asked about Umar. <coughs> She would say, I would see him tired all the time during his leadership. 
tired. He doesn't sleep. So she would say, oh, Umar, take a rest. He would say, لو أرحتها بالنهار لضاعت رعيتي ولو أرحتها بالليل لضاعت نفسي If I take a rest in the daytime I will harm رعيتي the people that I take care of and if I take a rest at night I will harm myself because I won't be able to do my spiritual duties No rest in leadership because it's about serving, it's about caring, it's about being fair to everybody, it's about addressing people's needs. And before you address people's needs, you need to know people's needs. And if you're not with people, if you don't have the heart and the mind to go and listen and understand and know what people want, what keeps people safe, comfortable, Rested so they can produce. If you don't know it, if you're not with people, you're not meant to be a leader. That means you're in it for other reasons. And we all know very well. When Rasulullah was asked, When is the hour? When is the end of time? When is the, the time of destruction and disasters and problems? Why, how, how would it happen? When would it happen? He said, He said, if the unqualified people, they take on jobs and tasks that they're not qualified for, that's where you await disasters. So when people take on jobs for other reasons, when the people take up jobs for fame, for gains, for money, for authority, for power, that's going to cause disasters in our community. And we've seen it happening. We see it happening globally. Extremists taking on jobs that are supposed to be caring for people. They take it for other reasons. We don't want to see this happening in Canada. So this is your obligation, my dear brothers and sisters, to act. Because we're talking about people becoming leaders. But who makes those people leaders? It's you. It's your vote. It's your engagement and participation. We have options. We have choices to make. Eventually, if we end up with leadership that doesn't care about you, it's you. It's you that allowed that leadership to become leadership. Not their qualifications and their goodness. It's you, either by being negative and not participating, or by choosing the wrong people. It's Monday. October 21st, a couple of days away. Do whatever you can to participate. Don't say I'm busy, I don't have time, I feel tired, it's raining, just my vote, what is it gonna make a difference? It's only me, I'm only one vote, it will make a difference. Because if we don't all move with the same energy, same understanding, same passion, the passion to select the proper leadership. The passion to get people that will care for us. The passion to secure good economy and safety. We will all pay the price. I call upon you and I ask you to be ready to move yourself, your people, your family, your friends and take this serious. It's a chance, don't waste it. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the knowledge and the understanding 
to follow his deen and to apply it in ala kulli shayin qadir. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless us and protect us and shower us with his mercy. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect all the weak ones across the globe. Allahumma as'alakul afwa wal afiyata fi dunya wal akhirah. Allahumma afina fi deenina. Allahumma afina fi dunyana. Allahumma astur awratina wa amir rawatina. Wahfadna min bayni yadayna wa min khalfina wa an yaminina wa an shama'ilina wa min fawqina. Wa na'udu bi'adhamatika an nukhtala min tahtina. Innaka ala kulli shayin qadir. Inna Allahumma alayka wa sallu ala al-nabi. Ya ayuhal ladhina amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima. Allahumma salli wa sallim barak Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala sahbihi ajma'in. Wa anta ya akhi aqim al-salam.